In this video, you'll learn how to use the new live masking mode available in Lumenzio version 3.0 on Photoshop CC. CS6 users will not be able to use this feature. You'll have to uh, just simply use the traditional masking modes and the mask button. But for users on CC, this is a new way to quickly try out different masks on your layers. So in this image, let's assume that we want to apply some kind of curve to darken down the sky. But you don't really know what mask would be most appropriate. So we could go through and start trying to play with different masks. And when we find one that we think is appropriate, simply just click on the mask button and reactivate the layer and see if we like that result. In this case, it's adjusted too much of the foreground. So it becomes a little bit of trial and error. And to try other masks, for example, if I want to try L, you want to turn off this layer because it's affecting the preview. So you'd have to turn it off, click mask, and then go and reactivate the layer. So it's certainly possible, and this is the way you can do it on CS6. However, there, with the new live mode, you can do this much more quickly. Simply click on this button that says normal, the mode button. One click will get you to live, and you'll see that all the standard luminosity masks and the zone masks are available for this mode. And to use it, just simply click on the corresponding mask you want, and you'll notice that it is immediately applied on the layer. Additionally, it should be noted that this mask turns off the current layer in order to generate this. So just like I was flipping the layer on and off, that is the result you get here. So the, the active layer on which the mask is applied will not be included in the mask. It only looks at the layers beneath it, which is appropriate because as we change these um, values in the curve here, we'd be changing the mask and that's not what we want. So to try out the different values here, we can simply click. So we could try the L channel. We could try lights two, try lights three. We're starting to get a better result. We have more foreground that we want and still getting the sky adjustment, but let's go one more to lights four. And to me, this is probably most appropriate. It's now really just affecting the sky here, which makes sense if we look at the mask underneath it, and we can then simply tweak this for a final result. So uh, at the end of the day, it's really just a quicker way to try out the various different masks and apply them directly to the selected layer, and that's really all it is.